Hatte in advance and welcome you all for the second webinar in the World Physiotherapy Day 2020 web series. In order to provide healthcare to rural and tribal masses of the region, Pravra Medical Trust was established in 1972. Appreciating the academic and research and healthcare activities undertaken by the Trust, Government of India recognized this institution as Pravra Institute of Medical Sciences deemed to be university in 2003. Today, this institution is recognized as one of the finest institutions of India. Unique with its location and its outreach activity that is being carried out uh, for around 6 lakh population, our university is unique feat with six institutions operational under one banner. In small village like Loni, our multi-speciality hospital provides best healthcare to thousands of patients near and far. Pravra Rural Hospital has been conferred national award under the category of best institution for providing services to senior citizens and awareness generation by His Excellency, late Honorable President of India, Shri Pranam Mukherjee at New Delhi on October 1st, 2015. This place has a history of social transport transformation which began 100 years ago. And today this entire region has become a land of prosperity and role model for the entire country. This change is accredited to our founding father, late Shri Padmashri Dr. Vithal Ravikhe and his son, late Shri Padma Bhushan Bara Sahib Vikhe Patil. Physiotherapy department was started in 1976 and to extend the rehabilitation services, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam College of Physiotherapy was started in 1997. The institution is named after His Excellency Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam as we are really fortunate that Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir visited Pravra Institute of Medical Sciences on 15th October 2005 on his birthday and distributed around 1400 floor reaction orthosis to differently able children. This college has produced nation's finest physiotherapists each passing year who are working across the globe. This institution is flourishing under the able leadership of Honorable Pro Chancellor Dr. Rajendra Vikhe Patil sir and Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Y. M. Jairat sir. This institution offers undergraduation program, post-graduation program in five specialities, that is orthopedic physiotherapy, neurophysiotherapy, cardiorespiratory physiotherapy, community physiotherapy, and pediatric physiotherapy. PhD program is also commenced from academic year 2010-11. The institution has a specialized center which is exclusively dedicated to provide comprehensive care and rehabilitation of spinal cord injury patients and the center is named after mother of soil, late Shri Sin Shrimati Sindhutai Vikhe Patil Spinal Cord Injury Rehabilitation Center. This institution has Nenia Spalmi International Exchange Program under which the students get full scholarship to visit prestigious universities like KI Institute Sweden and other European universities under different programs. Before starting the webinar, we must pay our tribute and acknowledge the inspiring vision and the conviction of great visionaries who pioneered the movement of knowledge and created a future direction for thousands of our fellow beings. Our founder father, late Padmashri, Dr. Vichal Rao Vikhe Patil, late Padma Bhushan, Dr. Bara Sahib Vikhe Patil, and mother of soil, Srimati Sindhutai Eknath Vikhe Patil. It is said, you are what you eat. A famous French author 
Athel Villain said, Tell me what you eat and I will tell you what you are. In today's COVID pandemic, nutrition has become a very important to improve our immunity as we don't have a specific medicine or vaccine to fight with COVID-19. We have to improve our immunity and that's the reason that our today's guest speaker, Ms. Mabel Lamville, is with us. She has done her bachelor's in food nutrition and dietetics and master's in clinical nutrition and dietetics. She has done her internship from Bridge Candy Hospital and currently she is working in Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital. And now I request Ms. Mabel to guide us on the role of nutrition to improve immunity. Over to you. Mabel, please unmute yourself. Can you hear, hear me, ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you, ma'am, for such a long uh, introduction. I would like to thank, firstly, the organizing committee of Dr. H.C. Abdul Kalam College of Physical Therapy for giving me such for giving me this opportunity to conduct this webinar on the occasion of World Physiotherapy Day. Uh, and it is also an uh, nutritional week that is going on currently. We are celebrating this week as well. So uh, I would like this will be a good opportunity to spreading uh, news or you can say the information regarding the nutrition as well. So uh, I would also like to thank the Almighty for giving me this opportunity. Even uh, uh, make sure that your speed uh, when you are talking is little slow yes. because you are talking fast and uh, the audio is not very clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So I will start the webinar on role of nutrition in improving the immunity. I'll start sharing my screen. Is it visible for everyone? Hello? Yes. yes, we can see it. And when you will change the slide, change it slowly and just wait for five seconds. Then you can oh. start. We can see your slides. Yeah. So I will start. So the role of nutrition to improve the immunity is the topic for today. Uh, so basically, we'll first see what is nutrition. So nutrition. Uh, Nutrition is the food that you eat and the way your body reacts to it. Nutrition is a science that interprets your nutrients and the substances in, in food related to the, uh, to the maintenance of your body's growth and its function. So now if you are studying nutrition, we should also know why is it important in your life. So nutrition is important in your life because you need to feel good, you need to have a healthier life, you need to be physically active, and the most important one, otherwise they will be referred to physios and dietitians so that they need to be more fit. Now, what is nutrition? 
what is immunity immunity is a state in which the body is protected from the disease immunity is a natural a natural response by our body because it's a defense mechanism it uh, in the response to the foreign particles such as bacteria pathogens virus that tends to damage the smooth functioning and its harmony of our body so that's the reason immunity is immunity is important for the body's well being now uh, there are types of immunities that we have so we will see uh, so basically there are two types one is innate and the acquired innate is nothing but something that is inborn or that is a genetic factor so uh, the innate is that everyone is born with now for an the the very uh, simple example regarding it like the one is our skin our skin acts as a barrier to block the germ that is entering in our body and the acquired ones this is the immunity that is developed throughout our life uh it is it is the influence of your environment or your food uh, or your medications or etc like whatever you eat or whatever uh, you develop through for an example injections of your measles or your uh, polio drops polio drops so this are something that we are uh, acquired throughout our life because of this such kinds of injections so now this acquired as you all can see there are of two types the active and the passive ones active is nothing nothing but something that is our own antibodies and the passive that we make it ready after the injection this will be ready so this is the types of it now a uh, little bit more in detail regarding what is innate and what is adaptive so the natural uh, the natural immunity like your uh, physical structure Uh, or your uh, physically or your uh, structural barriers like your mucosal lining inside your nasal passages if you see chemical one like your our stomach acids now for an example if you have biologically eaten something like a fly or something that will not harm you because because there are certain acids in your stomach that will destroy it that's the reason this is an innate one now the protective cells Uh, like a natural killer which is also known as nk cells this is our own nothing but our wbcs that helps to destroy them now the adaptive immunity or the acquired immunity uh, this is specific specialized white blood cells that have a kind of memory that recognize a particular virus or the pathogen that has entered through you and then according to its uh, dosages or if according to the amount that you need to fight through it you will get that uh, amount of your uh, memorized antibodies or antigens that will be released and that will fight through the uh, the infection or the virus that has entered in your body the mechanisms of it now in this uh, mechanism again we will see the basic thing that is innate and the acquired one so innate now if the, everyone uh, is aware about this fact that everyone is born with certain kind of immunity but to make it more stronger we need to feed the first yellow milk that comes that is your uh, colostrum that needs to be fed to the kids so that their immunity becomes more stronger that is the first first line of first essential thing that you need to give so that the immunity can be developed now the acquired immunity develops against the organism the structures of the organism by antigens present in the cells then there is a release of antigens that happens 
present uh, presentations like if a antigen is present then there are two types of antigen that will act to it that is your t lymphocyte that is your t lymphocytes and your b lymphocytes now a uh, development of cell if you see t lymphocytes they then further get developed to your development of uh, cell mediating immunity activation of helper t cells activation of cyto uh, cytotoxin uh, t cells t lymphocytes whereas they develops on the hormonal immunity they activate your b cells then the formation of your plasma cells productions of your antibodies and then however particularly they uh, then they however particularly they uh, they destroy or they uh, they kill that uh, antibodies so now this nutrition or uh, if you have a good nutrition obviously it's a fundamental of it it will be improving your immunity the immune system being the body's defense defense against the diseases and infection so they are your defense system they uh, fight against your disease they fight against your uh, infections and long being they establish they establish that the several factors that are influencing the function of your immunity which induce something that is very specific that is your stress your sleep and your nutrition this are something that have that is very much uh, influence that influence your immune system now if you are seeing what influence we also need to see what are certain factors that lowers your immunity so what lowers the immunity first is your age second is your stress third the low proteins in your diet fourth lack of sleep fifth after any major surgeries and the sixth one alcohol and smoking now if you see age we will just see everyone little bit more in detail to understand how it affects or just with certain examples to make it more simple now if it's an age above the age of 60 generally the immunity is lower but now as we all know regard current covid situation that is going on even about 50 as said to be you know you need to take more uh, precautions of your health because the immunity is getting lower at that particular age of yours so the immune nowadays is suppressed even in the 50s so second the stress stress is like everyone talk about now the stress the most important thing if you see a kid even a 10 or a 12 years old kid even say that oh my god we have stress currently so now what is the new stress in the kids that is their online studies they need to study online and this is a cause of stress to their to the kids and moreover just because they are at home the parents are more in the stress so this has something that is causing stress not only to the parents but also to the kids certain other things because of the economical crisis everyone has their financial instability stress their personal job stability stress and obviously there are some of the other everyone have their own personal issues that leads up to your stress now moving to the next one low protein in diet so now low pro uh, proteins that is directly correlated to the junk that you eat so less the pro uh, lesser uh, more the quantity of your junk in your diet lesser is the protein intake so uh, what 
what add up so that your protein in your diet goes low is most uh, most for most important one is your maida or you can say more better words will be a refined flour so if that is added in your diet then yes your protein quantity is going to decrease if you are eating more of fried food then again because of the oil your protein the quantity if anything that you fry on a higher flame because of the heat of the frame protein uh, protein chain or you can say the protein uh, elements in that will get broken and the absorption will again be an issue so uh, bean india we have always been on trend of having more of carbohydrates in our diet than having more of proteins in our diet now if it's a vegetarian the sources of your proteins will be something like your pulses your dairies like any milk and milk products will be the best source of your proteins for now even your soy your tofu will be a good source of your protein if you are a vegetarian for a non vegetarian there are ample amount of your proteins that are there but it needs to be taken wise now for us as we the dietitians we consider egg to be as a uh, reference source of protein because it has all source of your proteins in it like it is also said to be an 100% uh, protein in it so uh, we uh, we also tend to uh, we also divide proteins in like they are first class proteins then the proteins that you eat so in your first class yes bioavailability of your proteins will be higher in your egg your any non veg food but if you have any non veg food with components that doesn't allow the absorption of that particular nutrient then again your diet will be a low protein based diet won't be going more in detail of this because this is completely another topic towards it but yeah you need to even if you see if you want to take a first class protein in a vegetarian source the simplest form of it can be something like your khichdi your pulses and your dal combination or it can be something like your idli or your fermented foods where again your dal and pulses combination comes in next the lack of sleep so uh, i guess none of us will be having a good sleep like an 8 hour sleep that is the ideal amount of sleep that we all need to take but minimum 7 hours of sleep is also required if you if you tend to sleep like more uh, you know uh, on a reducing pattern of yours like if you are on a sleep of 5 hours 6 hours then obviously your immunity will be low because next day when you get up you won't be having the same strength it will be low on immunity always because you are already tired with it now major surgeries major surgeries if you if you yourself know that you are under you are going to undergo a surgery that surgery the day of the surgery the time of surgery the time it, the slow and steadily when it coming close to it that tends to increase more of your stress towards it now any surgery like your gi your spine surgery will get you a lot of stress will also compromise on your proteins certain things like your chemo or your radiation even this during this period all the patients are already on the immune suppression so getting they are low immunity so getting infected with some other sources are more are more obvious or they are more directed towards it now uh, the last one that is alcohol and smoking now this this is something that uh, i don't think so i need to go more in detail with this two words because if you in uh, indulge in more of smoking more of alcohol you are already suppressing your immunity with it 
some nutrition nutrients beneficial in improving your immunity like i have listed down few we will see them again in detail in the further slides like your proteins your vitamin a b6 b12 vitamin c vitamin d vitamin e vitamin b9 zinc iron copper selenium omega 3 phytochemicals and on antioxidants i won't be going detail in one each and every one but few of them which are actually very crucial vitamin e so uh vitamin a helps in maintenance of the integrity of the epithelial lining of different tissues thereby preventing colonizations by bacteria and infection now there are two forms of vitamin a that plays important role in regulation in regulating the cell differentiation not going more in detail regarding which vitamin and what it is but just briefing about it in vitamin a deficiency immune response is depressed because the number of phyto uh, lymphocytes and immunity is lower because they maintain the integrity of your epithelial lining of your different cells uh, many uh, studies have shown that vitamin a deficiency vitamin a deficient animals and persons are more susceptible to natural infections and response poorly to many immune ch uh, challenges so certain sources emphasizing on vitamin uh, that will be our carrot we love egg chicken even your basil leaves even this are high um, this are good amount of your vitamin a content in it or the active source of it that is your beta carotenoids moving towards the next that is vitamin d so in vitamin d it inhibits the beta cell proliferation and blocks uh, beta cell differentiation it also uh, suppresses t cell uh, proliferation it also decreases the production of inflammations of cytokines such as uh, interleukin 17 interleukin 21 with increased production of inflammatory cytokines it also has an effect on uh, mo monocytes and dendritic cells it inhibits monocytes productions of inflammation cytokines and regarding all the interleukins that gets affected through it now if you see your immune cells now your beta cell your t cells your lymphocytes your uh dendritic cells from the multiple autoimmune diseases appears to respond the immunomodulatory or the effect of vitamin uh, effect of vitamin d there is currently studies going on regarding the connection between vitamin d and the autoimmune diseases with it so there is no specific like and thing that is detected that this plays a major role with it or it doesn't play a major role in it but for now we can also see that it has a multiple autoimmune appearance in it if you see vitamin a b or the further slides which i have uh, which i have included in my presentation they are talking more from the research background because you anyone can google it and find out the information regarding vitamin b vitamin a you can get many through it but something that is very authentic authenticated will be very less so just talking through the uh, research articles of it moving to vitamin e vitamin e 
this is a dietary intervention of vitamin E at a supplementation level have been shown to enhance the cell mediator and the hormonal immune response in various species of animals increasing fight, uh, lymphocytes proliferation immunoglobin level uh, levels antibody response natural killer cells activity and interleukin 2 productions have been reported with vitamin e supplementation now vitamin e getting from your normal food or your normal source it is little we don't tend to eat good amount of, if i ask you to have every day a cabbage vegetable i don't think so everyone can keep eating in your lunch in your dinner for your uh, 365 days because if you see indian have a less amount of vitamin e in the diet and uh, one of the major source why recently if you see the pcos or pcod cases are rising up because of lack of vitamin e content in your daily intake so vitamin e the sources you can see over there there are few of them that i can uh, list it from them and i have kept it on the background photos of it like your almonds your chia seeds your uh, egg egg will be there everywhere because egg is an uh, first class protein or the you can say a bio available source of proteins you get everything through it so that is very important uh even if you see in vitamin e your broccoli is very important or any of your cruciferous vegetables so uh now if you have a thyroid i won't suggest you all that you should go on vitamin e supplement uh, vitamin e sources more in your diet you need to consult properly and include the sources of vitamin e in your diet because uh if with the thyroid the cruciferous vegetable doesn't go good with it moving to the next one that is your vitamin b6 vitamin b6 uh they act as an your coenzyme for uh, steroid there is a this is some this is something that is involved in your uh, cycle of it so any cycle that you pick up from your biochem b6 will be there as an important source of it because of it your atp your adp your molecular production will be little lower because of it so now it uh, alteration in your one carbon metabolism then it can lead to the changes in your nucleic acid synthesis such changes are the key effect of your vitamin b6 on your immune system, immune function now there are certain studies that has been come that shows that vitamin b6 deficiency adversely affects the lymphocytes production and antibody response to the antigens additional studies in the animal uh, supports an effect of vitamin b6 on cell mediatory immunity certain sources of your b6 that will be your uh, the way it is listed like your animal liver your ma your maize your chickens your al your walnuts pistachios fishes bananas drumstick leaves your black grams is all our sources of it of b6 b6 or any of your b vitamins like your uh, b complex vitamins these are something that are water soluble vitamins even your vitamin c is a, a water soluble vitamin so whenever you eat such kind of uh, vitamins when it is in your body make sure that it is not on uh, it is not cooked in a very high flame because such vitamins are very sensitive towards your heat certain amount of your heat rises then the destruction of this vitamins happens and uh, this vitamins are required every day because it it goes wash out through you every day now something that is the next one that is zinc so 
Now, zinc is one of the uh, nutrient which has been, uh, which has been spoken now for everything due to this COVID reason, because it ha the studies are going with it to understand the strong relation between the zinc and the COVID with it. So what is zinc and how does it actually help with your immunity? Zinc is known to play a central role in the immunity system. That's why the studies are actually going on with it. The immunological mechanism whereby the zinc modulators increase, increase susceptibility to infection have been studied for several decades. It is clear that zinc affects multiple aspects of your immunity system from the barrier of your skin to your, gen, uh, to your gene regulation within lymphocytes. Now, zinc is a crucial for normal development of your function of your cell mediating non specific immunity, such as neutrophils and your natural killer, natural killing cells. So, uh, zinc deficiency also affects the development of your acquired immunity by preventing both the outgrowth and the central function of T lymphocytes, such as its activation. Now, if you see a cytokine production, your beta, uh, your B lymphocytes also help in the activations also. So now something like your uh, beta, uh, B lymphocyte develops an antibody production, particularly immunoglobin B is compromised with this. Now, more than uh, B lymphocytes will help to produce antibodies, the immunoglobin G is compromised on it. So, uh, so now zinc is such a nutrient that actually, uh, if you if you take in good quantity, it is a good source. It's a blessing. If you take in in extra source, then it can be as a source of an issue to you. Also, now the uh, macrophagia. In this also, uh, the immunological function it adversely affects the zinc deficiency, which is dysregulating your intracellular killing cytokine productions and uh, phagocytes. The effects of zinc on this key immunological mediator is rooted in the roles of your uh, zinc in the basic nuclear uh, in the basic cellular functions such as your uh, DNA replications, your RNA repli uh, transcription, cell division, cell activations, they also functions as an antioxidant and can cause stabilized membranes. So, uh, now, when you talk about more in like your uh, DNA replication, I guess the structures and everything are fresh in our minds so we can see how the transcription, if you Go through your notes once again. You will see that somewhere down the line there will be a thing mentioned in your notes as well. Not going into the biochemistry much in detail. Now, uh, selenium. This uh, this mineral is also coming in a trend that has been spoken about. Now, uh, how the selenium is important? Though the selenium is requirement is very minute but it is very essential for everyone now zinc deficiency can lead to impairment of your immunological functions that results in inability of phagocytes neutrophils and microphagia to destroy or uh, to destroy antigens a low selenium status in humans has been reported to cause a decrease in immunity response to polio virus uh, vaccination. So zinc is important since then. It is it is come in it has come in trend now, but it has been talked in the research articles since a uh, few decades ago. Uh, mechanism, how does it work? So now increasing activity of your natural killer cells, the uh, pro the proliferation of your T lymphocytes that stimulates the vaccination, induce immunity, and increase your antibody production. So now whenever this uh, vaccination is given, the immunity towards 
it increases that's what it is actually talking about how selenium if you if there is a polio virus in, uh, infection given to you how selenium will play a role in it next is vitamin c so uh, vitamin c is something that is your antioxidant it prevents your inflammation it enhances both the innate and the adaptive uh, and the adaptive immunity that's why if you see any of your covid patients if you see the prescription papers you will obviously you will see something that is vitamin c medication there for 28 days uh not promoting any of the names but if you see any of your paper you, you pick any of your prescription paper they will be having something a word called linsey the medication called linsey so this is something that is given for everyone because vitamin c plays a very important role in inflammatory in the inflammatory stage of your life now vitamin c the sources of your vitamin c is anything that is sour will give you good amount of your vitamin c but the way i told you prior as well that it is an heat or uh, uh, it is a heat sensitive protein or your vitamin so the myth that is always said to everyone is you have hot water with lime drops in it it will help you to improve your immunity actually if you add vitamin c that is your lime or uh, your droplets of your lime in it your lime water in it then because of the heat that your lukewarm water also has will destroy all the molecules of your vitamin c and you will be just having a hot water with a negligible amount of uh, calories coming from it and nothing else through it so if you want to have something for your proteins or for your immunity source we can see further next is copper now the copper de uh, copper dependent enzyme provides a natural defense against your free radicals now free radicals that are, that damages your body so now the way we all know if there is a free radical the inflammation the inflammatory stage um, continues for a longer time Uh, manufactures your collagens required by your skin and the bone. I don't think so. I need to talk more about collagen because I'm talking to the group of physios who know more detail about the collagen. Then the inactivate the the inactivate histamine, which is responsible for allergic reactions and degradation of dopamine in your neurotransmitter uh, transmitter, so that cells can communicate to each other. so now copper is such a messenger you can say that transfers your information from your cell to your other another cell so there is a studies also done with it the, the way you can see uh, in 2015 it says that the copper was essential for the effective innate immune response and inadequate level lead it to the sustainability of the bacterial infection so now if you don't have that good amount of uh, copper in your body then the uh, sustainability or the duration of the infection can increase through it now excessive copper can lead to some other diseases that we all know such as wilsons and uh, etc so uh, we need to have everything in the proper dosages if you don't have that proper amount of your vitamin your minerals in your diet then it is going to affect to you coming towards iron iron everybody talks about how it is important what it is important and why it is important so i won't be going in detail like how why and what but i will talk to you all through certain research papers only with relation to iron because if you see about iron there is lot of uh, 
Google materials that talk to you about the about the information with it. But some are authentic, some are not authentic. Some are just like that given on the website. So what actually iron says about it? So our research suggests low iron level affect our ability to have an adequate immune response. The study was done a little later. That is uh, one that is in 1999. But we will move a little forward with step by step. It also requires for your immune cell production and growth, uh, particularly lymphocytes, which are related to initiate initiation of specific response to your infection. Another study that was done that shows the abnormalities in the cell mediating immunity and the ability of neuro uh, neutrophils to kill several types of bacteria is commonly seen in iron deficient uh, patients. Now, uh, how do you correlate with this for the basic thing? Now, if you have low immunity, or if you have something that is your iron, your HB is low, obviously you will look lethargic. You won't have that good amount of strength. The amount of the oxygen that you're breathing is also affected through it because if you don't have that good amount of uh, iron in your body, the uh, oxygen carrier becomes less in your body. So the infection, now if you, obviously if you don't breathe well, you don't eat well, good amount of iron, then soon they will be seen somewhere consulting the doctors saying that we need to increase the iron in our body. Now iron, sub, uh, now the iron is another important in natal host defense mechanism because many pathogens uh, uh, phy depends on uh, this essential elements as a conquered availability of body iron is strictly controlled and bond to proteins such as your transference and your friends. So this is something that is uh, that is your cells. Uh, and this is very important with uh, the connection of your iron absorption and its metabolism. Now, uh, this is something that I will be not going in detail with you, but if you all want to read it, how, which vitamin is important with which kind of your, uh, which kind of your clinically regarding your conditions, like a vitamin A with your influenza virus, vitamin C, the studies going on with the connection of vitamin D uh, with your COVID-19. Your vitamin D with your respiratory effects, vitamin E with your chronic hepatitis, and so on. Now, something that is very, very minute or very negligent, but you really need to pay a very important role on it. And that is your omega and your hydration. Now, omega is something that is uh, that is important. If you take it excessive, it can cause you destruction. If you don't take it, it may be a source by your uh, by your infl uh, inflammation is more. Whereas, if you talk about dehydration, water water is very important because whatever you have that contains toxicity, that needs to be flushed out from your body. So good amount of your water needs to be there in the body. Now certain beneficial, uh, beneficiary sources or the food that is very important in during the immunity. One is your amla, your turmeric, that's your haldi, your black pepper, garlic, your uh, kala jeera or your black cumin, ginger, spinach, or in respect to any of your green leafy vegetables, and salmon or any other fish that is important because even if even if you see the bones of your fish will also contain good amount of your calcium and your omega in it. Now that things that you should include in your diet so that your Im immunity keeps improving or you have the strength to it that is your soup, your masala tea, 
your mixed fruits any of your kadas your smoothies is all with include also include certain things in your diet the way i told you all haldi ga, uh, garlic your cumin seeds should be there in the diet now this is how your actual plate should look like it should have good amount of your grains your cereal as a source of your carbs your protein the source of your uh, fibers that will be your vegetable and your salad and your oxygen source like your fruits and something that is very important that is your dairy certain references from which i have taken it will uh, like to add a top will like to add a quote from a biblical saying that your body is a temple of god so respect it this is said from a bible from the corinthians book so ending my topic with a uh, thank you thank you mabel madam for this uh, excellent and exclusive presentation on the nutrition which improves our immunity a topic which is very important and very very related to covid 19 pandemic um i request the participant if they have any question please raise your hands and i feel some questions should come because generally we uh, don't give much uh, uh, we don't consider nutrition that important or whatever is there we eat any question raise your hand if you have any question yeah nitisha just unmute your audio and ask you a question uh good morning ma'am uh ma'am my question was um uh, since we say that breakfast is a very important meal of the day what what uh, uh new what should a proper breakfast consist of so what intake is appropriate so a uh, breakfast it should it should be yes it is said to be uh, the most important meal of your day because you need to start with a good food so that you have a proper energy and your proper stamina that is maintained throughout your day so you need to it, it's not necessary that you need to have a good amount of good quantity of your food but something as simple as your porridges that will contain your cereal plus a source of milk so that your protein and your carbs that is required you will be getting that from your porridges or it can be something like the normal indian meal that we have something like your poha your upmas or even if you go for a milk shake in the morning if you are very late will also be a source of a good start for your day oh thank you ma'am okay may jen unmute yourself and ask your question Ma'am, can you tell something about the sixteen-hour diet? So you want to know more detail about the fasting that we do? So, uh, fast. This is something that is actually practiced by Indian because of their religious purposes. Everyone has a particular part of your fasting that we all do. So this is something that has picked up from there. Our body needs to fast at least. once or twice a month to keep a good metabolism of your body but if you are not habitual of fasting for longer time and you go on such kind of diet which is actually not it is nothing that it is recommended it is not recommended but the way your body will react towards it is something that you need to look into it so ma'am can it be reduced to like the 14 hour or the 12 hour plans like that so for that you need to actually see how your body is if you are okay with a gap of 4 or 5 hours you don't have any kind of your abdominal discomforts with it then yes you can try doing it but if your body shows some re- uh, some shows some effect towards your diet then uh, you should not just directly start through it but you need to Consult a proper person and get on your diet. 
Any other question is there? Yes, Any okay. other question is there? Okay. Now I request Dr. Nupur, who is from Community Physiotherapy Department, to propose vote of thanks. And I also request all the participants, you will get feedback link. Please feel the feedback. It will be beneficial for us for our future endeavors. Nupur, madam, over to you. On behalf of Department of Community Physiotherapy and entire supporting staff of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam College of Physiotherapy, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our Honorable Pro-Chancellor Sir, Honorable Vice-Chancellor Sir, Respected Vice-Principal Sir of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam College of Physiotherapy and Praura Institute of Medical Sciences for giving us this opportunity. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation and big thanks to our guest speaker, Ms. Mabel Lanwell, for sharing her knowledge and enlightening our minds with the thoughts of nutrition. I also wish to express my gratitude to uh, IT department for their kind support and a big thank to all our participants for attending this session. Thank you, everybody. I want to thank all the participants. And on Saturday, we are having a World Spinal Cord Injury Day. So we will be meeting with a new guest speaker on 5th of September on the same time. So please do join us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mabel, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.